Hello, today's blog is going to wrap up the discussion uh, about continuation coverage for former spouses and family members uh, of the TRICARE uh, Military Medical and Dental Health Insurance Program. So as we've discussed in other blogs, uh, in an intact family, husband, wife, and some children, uh, as long as the service member is active, uh, uh, then or retired, uh, the family is covered under the TRICARE program. Upon divorce, uh, the former spouse loses coverage in some circumstances, sometimes can keep the coverage, but uh, that's in a previous blog. I encourage you to look it up uh, because it largely depends on timing and length of the marriage and service. Uh, but there are some ways to address uh, continuing coverage for the ex-spouse that uh, are sort of workarounds uh, for a, a spouse who might not otherwise qualify for TRICARE coverage after a divorce. So uh, if you recall, the a previous blog uh, mentioned the 2020 and 2010 rule. 2020 rule basically means that if a spouse, a spouses were married for 20 years of, and all 20 of those years were during the member's service, the former spouse maintains uh, full TRICARE afterwards, even after a divorce. The 2010 rule allows the spouse to maintain coverage of TRICARE for only one year after divorce. Uh, but what about for spouses that don't meet those criteria? What can happen? They lose coverage. Neither party may want that. Uh, so there are two means of addressing this that we can talk about today. The first is that I mentioned earlier uh, in an earlier blog briefly, but is instead of filing for divorce in Wisconsin, you can file for a legal separation. The difference in Wisconsin is minimal between divorce and separation but it has a great difference in uh, the military's concept. Legally separated spouses in the military are still considered family members. And therefore, the legally separated spouse can remain on TRICARE. Uh, now, the other issues in a divorce, for example, the uh, allocation of custody of the children, division of property, uh, spousal support, child support, etc. All of those things are granted in Wisconsin in a legal separation just like they are in a divorce. Uh, but again, the military, while permitting and allowing all of those things to go forward in, in the divorce or in the separation, uh, still considers the spouses to be family members and therefore TRICARE continues. Now, one uh, issue to be aware of in a situation like this is if both spouses agree that they will file for a legal separation instead of a divorce um, in order potentially to keep the former spouse on TRICARE. In Wisconsin, after a year a year after the legal separation, one spouse can ask to convert the separation to a divorce. And there really isn't any way to prevent the other the spouse from doing it. So the former spouse, even though they may have obtained a separation to stay on TRICARE, does still have uh, exposure uh, to lose the TRICARE if the other spouse wishes to uh, convert the divorce to a separation, uh, excuse me, the separation to a divorce. The most common reason for that is the uh, military spouse wishes to remarry. In Wisconsin, you can't remarry if you are legally separated. You can only remarry if you are divorced. So the uh, service member, the spouse, uh, will file a request to convert the separation to a divorce. That will then almost certainly be granted 
And at that point, the former spouse is no longer considered a, a, a family member of the service member and will lose the uh, TRICARE access. So these are all things that the former spouse and his or her lawyer should be aware of uh, be, uh, to consider how long the uh, former spouse may remain on TRICARE. These are all things that are often um, considered in, uh, in settlement discussions. The second means of, of monitoring the uh, continuation of TRICARE is the timing of the divorce. So as we discussed, for example, the uh, 2020 rule permits the former spouse to remain on TRICARE indefinitely if, the, uh, if he or she was married to the service member for 20 years and those 20 years were during active duty. But what happens then if the service member uh, or if the, if the family wants to uh, file divorce and, uh, at 19 and a half years? Um, that may not be the wisest option because if the divorce is granted, you know, two months short of the 2020 service requirements, a real benefit and a real financial savings has been lost in all likelihood for no particular reason. So both spouses would likely benefit from a discussion with their attorneys of filing, or even if the divorce had been filed, delaying the final judgment of divorce until after the 20 year, or the 2020 rule is satisfied. That way the former spouse maintains indefinite coverage and the, the, the savings of the former spouse potentially having to get his or her own health insurance can be enormous. Uh, the former spouse doesn't need to pay it, but the military spouse uh, has uh, less exposure for having to pay potential spousal support to cover the cost of increased health insurance. So uh, the spouses don't have to be best friends. They don't even have to get along for issues like this, but the lawyers representing them in a divorce should discuss it because issues like this can A, prevent significant problems, but B, uh, can really ease a financial burden uh, with no cost at all to either side uh, that can really have a significant effect on settlement of the case uh, rather than trying to you know, convince a judge or educate a judge somehow to delay a case or, uh, if, um, or just losing the benefit altogether. Uh, so those are two sort of informal concepts to consider uh, regarding the continuation of healthcare uh, in a divorce in Wisconsin involving a service member.